We're looking at surface normals, and we saw how rotation was surface normals. That's a good thing. Translation was surface normals. That's a bad thing. Scaling was surface normals. Not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to renormalize the normal after scaling it. Even if that scaling is combined with a rotation, we still have to renormalize that normal. In this video, I want to show why scaling must be uniform. Generally, in games, we do a translation and a rotation. We generally do not scale as well, though we certainly could. We get some effects like that. In our modeling tools, like Maya, we do scaling, but once we freeze transformation, then those vertices take on their original positions. For example, freezing transformations here, I actually went to the effort <laughs> of instead of doing my rotation in this matrix, I took the results and froze the transformations. If you've ever used Maya and said freeze transformations, that's exactly what Maya is doing. Is it's changing the transformation matrix, all the identity matrix, and then saving the result of the previous transformation matrix that you have. Anyway, regardless, I made my rotated box by putting the resulting positions. Actually, I put them in right here, and they result to out here. And why did I do that? Because I wanted to show you how non-uniform scale can affect the surface normal. And with a box that is axis aligned, that means exactly how we had it before, where our box was a perfect shape aligned with the x and the y axis, non-uniform scaling actually doesn't affect it. But now we have a shape that's not axis aligned, which is very common to have surfaces, especially in 3D. Those surfaces won't be aligned to the axes. And so let me show you how this affects the normal. Let me trace the box as I did in previous videos. I'll go from here, here, to here, here, to here, here, to here. Oh, come on, here, to here, if I can do that right. And then we clean up the extra edges. You can see we have our rotated box, which is quite nice. And then you can see the surface normal. That's a, another reason why I like doing all these numbers up here by hand is because we can s now see the surface normal pointing straight out. This surface normal has normalized its length 1, 0 0.7 times 0.7 plus 0.7 times 0.7. Square root that. That'll give you a length of 1. And anyway, we have our nice normalized normal here. And if I draw them out here, you can see he's perpendicular to this surface, which is nice. Now I want to scale this box, just as we did in previous videos. I want to scale him, but I want to scale him non-uniformly. That means I'll leave this down at a 1, and we'll change this to a 1.5. Move this up to 1.5. Actually, 1.5. Yeah, okay, there we go. 1.5. So I've now scaled my box. Let me trace the box using the new positional vector positions, vertice positions. I'll connect that one, I'll connect that one, connect that one, connect this one, take off the trimmings here. You see now we get a more of a diamond look, but that is our non-uniformly scaled box. Okay, we've skewed it. That's another Another way to call it, we've skewed it. It's not a box anymore. It's more like a stretched out kind of weird looking thing. Look what non-uniform scaling did to our surface normal. Okay, before when I drew that normal right here, it was nice and perpendicular, nice and length one. The length is no longer length one. I'm trying to dare you to square this, square this, add the results together, and take the square root. You will not get one. You may think, well, we can just renormalize it. That's not a big deal. But oh, what happens if I pick this surface normal up and I draw it? on the surface to which it represented perpendicularity. Say that 10 times. Okay, I'm going to try to draw this by hand as best as possible. We'll do it right here, and go out here, and there we go, like that. Well, does this surface normal look like it's perpendicular to this green surface right here? No, it's not. It's definitely not perpendicular. Perpendicular would be like that. If it was perpendicular, I could just renormalize it. And and it'd be perpendicular, but it's not. It's going off like that, and that is definitely not 90 degrees there. Anyway, when we have non-uniform scaling, we can't use that on our normal and expect our lighting equations to work out correctly. And in that case, what we'd actually have to do is send down a separate rotation-only matrix for our surface normals. We'd have to send that down separately to our shader as a uniform parameter. Don't get that mixed up with non-uniform scaling. We'd have to make a separate rotation matrix and normal rotation matrix only, which would rotate our normals into world position 
and send that down. Now, how often do you do a non-uniform scale? I rarely, if ever, do it. And generally, I'm not doing a scaling. I do a rotation. I do a translation. And so if your model to world transformation matrix only has a rotation and a translation, as we saw in previous videos, you can turn on translation and hit your vectors that represent vertex positions with it, and you're just fine. And then to turn off translation, you just set the last component on your normal to zero, make sure it's a zero, and then you'll extract just the rotational portion and apply that to the normals. So even though I've done several videos talking about all the weird things that could happen with normals, that's purely for educational purposes. The main thing to remember, hit your positional vertices with translation turned on, and then hit your surface normals with translation turned off. Going back to our shader code, here's the model to world transformation matrix. It has the rotation and the translation. We want the translation applied to our positional vertex, which is what V is. But we don't want that translation to apply to the normal, so we chop the translation off with the matrix 3. However, you saw that I think it's much better. Uh, it makes more sense to me to just say VEC4. It's a normal. Turn off translation. That's what 0 means there. And then, of course, I have to cast it back to a VEC3 because my output parameter here, the normal, is a VEC3. But there you go. Control F5. Build that. Run that. You can see our lighting looks correct. If my light bulb is right here, which it is, let me get a different color. My light bulb's right here, which it is. This is nice and bright, nice and bright. The plane's nice and bright. All that's bright. And this side of the arrow is nice and bright. That looks good. Feels good. But if I fly around to the arrow, and you can see that nice brit lit, brightly lit surface, but back here, it's nice and dark because we have our vertex position and our surface normals, all those vectors are correct.